Hey guys, Leslie here from The 7 Wayfinders. Thanks for tuning in to one of our tip videos. I absolutely love seeing you here. Make sure you subscribe. If you don't know who we are, we're a husband and wife traveling around the world with our five kids, hence The 7 Wayfinders. I'm currently in beautiful Christchurch, New Zealand. We've been traveling the world for almost two years. I can hardly believe it. <laughs> with five kids, I have a lot of questions obviously, about how we manage this lifestyle. And one of the biggest questions I get is how do you handle medical issues abroad? So I wanted to make a video to address that for you. I also have information on my blog, so make sure to check that out, www.7wayfinders.com, where I do specific blog posts on these topics. Let's talk about medical issues. So first of all, I'm just gonna put it out there that I don't think you can full-time travel if you have chronic, ongoing medical problems. If you do, then it's just gonna require a whole lot more planning, and I don't think that you can see the entire world in that case. That being said, there's some stuff that's probably gonna surprise you about medical issues while you're international that I wanna share. First of all, Asia. Let's talk about Asia. You can go to a pharmacy in Asia and buy almost any prescription you want. <laughs> you may or may not have to show a prescription. It's pretty amazing. I had a serious medical issue while I was in Vietnam with my eye and I was given a prescription and I will also tell you that those medicines cost pennies on the dollar compared to what we pay in the United States. I had a little tiny bottle of Vigamox, which I bought in the United States with our insurance plan for I think $200 and in Vietnam I think it cost me $50 for the exact same thing. It was amazing. <laughs> so you can get some really good medicine abroad, especially in Asia. If you're looking for a specific prescription, you can even go find it. This is true for Europe too. My mom really likes this certain eyelash prescription to help grow your eyelashes. Sorry, mom, if you watch this for that little secret. <laughs> She can buy it all over the place. She can go into pharmacies in Europe and just ask them if they have it. So it's really different. <laughs> oh my word, Grace. She was sitting right next to me and I turned to her and she just hit me straight in the eyeball. Started swelling and weeping and getting super red. So it's like a two and a half hour drive. So I got here at like 4.10, walked in, found someone who speaks English, showed him my note written in Vietnamese and found out that my doctor had left that for And I literally, I literally just started to cry. It's scary, you guys. I'm here by myself. Next, pharmacies. They're not in your supermarket or they're not in the Target like they are in the United States. They're completely separate from groceries. They're in two different buildings. They're in a very standalone pharmacy. Usually that pharmacy will have a few extra goods that you can buy, but if you're looking for where to go, you have to look specifically for a pharmacy. Medical care. So we haven't had a ton of issues while we've traveled, but we have had some. We've had some orthodontia. We've had our dental cleanings. I had a medical emergency with my eyeball. Harrison had a medical emergency in the hospital in Beijing, which you can watch on a separate video. Both of those are separate videos. We've had a few minor things where we've had to go see a doctor. We've also just kept up on our well checks. We had well checks in Tokyo. We've had braces off. <laughs> we put them on right before we left. We've had them off. We've had them checked. So you can find anything you want as you travel around the world, including English speaking medical professionals. It's really not that hard. In a lot of places, if you're in an emergency situation, you need to look for an international hospital. That is gonna be a hospital that caters to tourists, that speaks English, and that you pay out of pocket. So that's something really important to know. They're probably not even going to treat you until you pay some money out of pocket. However, these costs are so much less than the United States. Harrison ended up being in a hospital in Beijing for two different nights in a private room with lots of testing done and I think the entire total came out just under $2,000 for us. Had that happened in the United States, I think it would be a minimum before insurance of 25 grand. Mom. So that is really important to know. We stopped by the dermatologist here in Split, Croatia. He sits Chris down, looks at his eyes, says, oh, you have eczema, I'll give you a cream. He freezes off some of Grant's warts. He lasered Grant's toe because he's got a toe fungus. He cut off a mole for me, and it's gonna be about $160. So I just ran to the ATM to pay him. 
whole thing, 30 minutes. Remember where the needle got in? I do. Look. Come here, come say hi. How was your experience in Beijing? Was it scary? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Oh, just a minute. What do you say to everyone? Say hi. Cherry, we got two dinosaur ones. Was that, were you okay though? Yeah. Did you get an IV in your arm? Yes. He's got a lot of mosquito bites right now. Look, it's right there. No, it was not. It was right up here. I think I can see a hole that it poked. Did you like the doctors in Beijing? Yeah, but it's right there. Were they nice to you? Yes. Was it scary? Yes. But you're okay now, right? Love you. So know that it's not gonna cost you the small fortune that it costs in the United States, even if you have something happen. We got all of our dental cleanings in Bangkok twice. We've gone eight months apart or 10 months apart. We got all of them done in 40 minutes. Seven people for around $225. That's far less than we would have paid on a monthly premium for dental insurance. Granted, we are generally very healthy, but we have paid so much less traveling internationally and having to just go one-off times and paying out of pocket than we even would have paid for our insurance premiums. Now, are we uninsured? No, we're not. Do I believe in being uninsured? No, I don't. The emergency bills that can rack up in a serious medical emergency can easily bankrupt you. So we never are totally uninsured. What do we use for insurance? We use travel insurance for our first year of travel through World Nomads. I've only submitted one claim, which was Harrison's emergency in Beijing. It was very hard to get money from that, but we finally did. We got about half of it paid for, so I'm a little iffy on how I feel about that, but it's a great option for when you're traveling. We also have a Christian health share plan out of the United States that can act like health insurance, whether you're in the United States or not. You submit your claim and the group contributes money and that pot can come back to you. I've never actually submitted a claim or successfully received any money, <laughs> but we do keep it as sort of like our emergency backup. And a couple of my high school friends that are now moms like me have had babies on it. They've had a lot of medical issues and they really, really love that option. So we have that. On our second year of full-time travel, we decided to go for global insurance. So I didn't really even know this existed. I did quite a bit of research, finally found it, and we now have a global insurance plan. We don't actually live anywhere internationally, but they were able to just use an address from an Airbnb that we stayed at for five weeks and that was fine out of Portugal. So we now have global insurance. You can choose to either include or exclude the United States on that global insurance and the premiums vary drastically. So we are excluding the United States because we do not plan to be in the United States more than about a month every 12 months and we will just have our Christian health share backup in that case or pay out of pocket. What else? How do you find providers? Google, just Google. I always read reviews, okay? Sometimes I look them up, sometimes I ask some of our staff to look them up because we do have an online business with staffers who can help us in tough situations. If we're traveling all day, we might ask someone to look it up for us. The key is just reading reviews, okay? You're gonna have other people in your same situation that were traveling there. I use the same thing for beauty appointments and I'm gonna have a separate video all about that, but read the reviews, okay? <laughs> You'll get so much information from the reviews from other people who have been, who are traveling, who had a bad experience. I always expect at least one or two bad ones because that's just life. But if you have 50% bad, I probably don't go to them. It's just a little one or two, no problem. Some people are really picky. I'm not that picky, so it's okay. I've had fantastic experiences around the world. We also have a large Instagram following, so I can always ask them too. That's not something everyone has, but hey, if you ever need advice, message me and I'll ask for you. Let's talk about children and just keeping up on their health in general. So I wasn't really sure where to get well check visits and we ended up finding an international hospital in Tokyo and had fantastic appointments. They caught them all up on their vaccinations. Because my kids are not babies, they don't have to have one every couple of months. They usually only have to have one a year or one every two or three years. So we got all caught up in Tokyo and we're good for another year. Getting Lucy's braces off. 
orthodontia. We had our orthodontia put on right before we left. We had one checkup where Lucy flew back with Chris from California to get hers checked out. And they just kind of sped up her plan and tightened it kind of aggressively. And then she was good to just let it sit for 10 more months. And then we had it off in Tokyo. It was no problem. She did have one bracket break in Hong Kong. So we quickly found an international English speaking doctor who was trained outside. You can, you know, they're trained in California, but I'll be honest, the ones trained locally are just as good. And she had a bracket fixed there. So it's really easy, guys. It was way intimidating for me, but as long as you're generally healthy, not gonna be doing anything super stupid you're gonna be absolutely fine Bangkok is a fantastic hub for medical experiences in Asia as is Singapore and Tokyo Europe is pretty much all first world and very similar to the US I haven't personally had to use their medical system but I have other families that I follow or other followers of mine say that it was so easy and sometimes cost them nothing at all. I know of another mom who broke her ankle in Italy. She went to the emergency room, was sent home the next day, and I think it didn't cost her anything because it's socialized medicine. So guys, it's not that scary. We haven't done South America yet or Africa. So if we go and I have anything happen, I'll be sure to do a follow-up video. But mostly I would just say, don't let it hold you back. You're gonna be absolutely fine, even if you're crazy enough like us to take your life on the road full time. If you have any more questions, make sure to check the blog, send me a message, and subscribe while you're on your way out. See ya!